everyone, welcome back to my channel, the best place for new coaches, content creators, and entrepreneurs. In today's video, you'll notice that the setting is a little bit different because I'm about to share my screen and show you step-by-step -step what my media kit looks like and what I think you should include in your media kit so that you can secure more brand deals. Now, before we dive into this video, I do want to say that it doesn't matter how beautiful your media kit is, what you put inside your media kit. If you are someone who doesn't know how to pitch, how to sell, how to position yourself, and most importantly, how to communicate your value to the brands that you're reaching out to, to compel them to even click on your media kit, then there's really no point in watching this video. So that's why do yourself a favor. And after this video, watch this video that I have here. If you haven't already, this video is super juicy and it's going to teach you how exactly you can communicate with these brands so that they're more willing to actually work with you. So make sure not only do you watch this video, but you watch this one as well. Now, before we begin on top of all that, something that we do here on this channel is we love to shout people out. So let's dive into those shout outs first. Before we dive into this week's awesome video, we want to shout out the comment and YouTube channel of the week. Thank you so much for leaving these kind messages onto last week's video. Not only this, we also want to shout out the Instagram story and profile of the week as well. Thank you again for shouting out our videos. Now, if you're watching this and you're wondering how can I get featured in the next video? It's very simple. Number one, you could either leave a comment below on this video or you can take a picture of this video and share it with your audience on Instagram. Just don't forget to tag me. Now with that out of the way, let's just dive right into this week's video. All right, welcome back. So I want to show you my Canva because a lot of people ask me, where do you create your media kit? How did you make your media kit? I want to quickly show you that you can do it for free on Canva. So simply clicking here and typing in media kit, you'll be able to access a couple of templates that you can use. So for me personally, when I created my media kit, I used Canva and I actually based off my media kit off of this template right here. So that's the first thing that you want to make sure that you have is a media kit template. And again, you can do it for free on Canva. All right. So once you've figured out what template that you might want to use on Canva, the next thing that you want to do is you want to have a summary page. Now, this is a page that I put as the first page of my media kit. I'm not wasting the brand's time by just putting a photo of myself and my name already on the first page. I want them to know exactly who I am and what I do and all of my platform links. So as you can see here, I have my three titles or what I associate myself with. So I'm an entrepreneur, business coach, and a content creator. And then I've got my bio. So this is a really quick blurb about who I am, a very quick summary. And then I've got all of my platform links that they can easily access if they want to. Finally, I also kind of put a disclaimer saying that all the statistics that I'm about to show in this media kit are 100% organic with zero paid efforts. And that's just something that I wanted to do to really showcase how impressive some of my stats really are and to make it clear to the brands that all the stats that I'm showing them are from organic efforts and I didn't pay for any of the traffic that I received. Now, if you're an influencer or you're someone who has used paid traffic, that's totally fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you're someone who hasn't, it's kind of cool to be able to highlight that to a brand because that to a brand may seem a lot more impressive. Now, after you've added your one page summary that includes a very high level bio, the next thing that you want to consider adding into your media kit is as much data as possible possible. So let me give you a quick example of what I'm talking about. So as you scroll through my media kit, you'll notice that I'm already showing a lot of the data when it comes to my YouTube channel. Not only am I including how many subscribers, views and impressions that I have, but I'm also being very detailed and letting them know how many monthly video views I have, how many monthly new subscribers I have. And by the way, these are stats that you can easily pull from in your YouTube analytics or on social blade. And I highly recommend that you actually show your receipts, actually screenshot a lot of that data so that the brands know that you didn't just make these numbers up and that these numbers are in fact real. So as you can see over here, I just quickly screenshotted my 2019 channel analytics. Now, obviously my media kit is pretty old, so I should probably update this. So for you, I wouldn't necessarily use 2019 data. I would actually use the most recent data that you have, maybe in the span of the last three months or so. Not only this, I'm also giving the brand more 
context. I'm actually adding how active I've been on my YouTube channel. And since when did I have my channel for? So I write, I've been active since July 25, 2018, and I upload every Sunday at 9 a.m. This is going to be really important for the brands to know because they obviously want to work with influencers that are a lot more active and they love to know and understand the frequency of how much you post on your socials. So that's just a really quick bonus tip for you, especially if you are someone who has an upload schedule. But anyways, back to my point about including as much social media data as possible. As you go through my media kit, you'll see that I even go as far as adding my social blade snapshot to really show the brand that I'm not lying and look at my stats. Look at how many video views that I get every single week, every single month, as well as my daily averages. Because guess what? A brand will already be looking at your social blade. So I'm just simply making it easier for them by screenshotting the stats for them. And as you can see, I do the exact same thing with my other platforms as well. You'll see this for my Instagram, where I include the followers, the engagement rates, the average likes that I get, the weekly profile visits, the monthly followers, and again, also the frequency of how much I post. So you'll see here that I do daily Instagram stories and I do two times a week of posting minimum. Not only this, here's another bonus tip for you. As you're sharing a lot of the analytics and a lot of the stats that you have for your social media platforms, something that you also wanna consider doing is benchmarking. So for example, here, I'm telling the brand that I have about a 7% engagement rate and I put an asterisk right beside it. And the reason why I wanna do this is because I want them to know that the average engagement rate for an account my size is around three to four percent. This is highlighting to the brands that even though seven percent doesn't sound like a lot, it's actually really, really impressive compared to other accounts my size. So if you have any stats that you already know are super impressive, I highly recommend that you include that in your media kit as well so you can educate these brands on why they should really work with you and why your stats are impressive. And again, to kick things up a notch, I'm also really diving deep into my analytics to really showcase my stats to the brand and also including all of the screenshots. So here are my Instagram statistics. I'm telling the brand how much reach I get every week, how many views on average I get per story, how many impressions, how many reach per post, and you can easily find this on your analytics within the Instagram platform. So I'm gonna show a quick tutorial on how you can do that here. So as you can see, you're able to actually access this and filter through your posts, your stories, everything that you need so that you can screenshot it and include it into your media kit. The more data that you can present, the more proof that you can present, the better because that's going to allow the brand to really buy into you and make it a no brainer to want to work with you. Because the problem that a lot of brands face is a lot of influencers tend to lie about their stats. And that's why a lot of brands have a lot of mistrust and skepticism when it comes to new influencers that they haven't worked with before. So I always try to build that trust with the brand by including as much data as possible and as many screenshots as possible as well. Now, on top of including all of your social media stats and including all the screenshots to prove it, the next tip that I have for you is to make sure you dive deep on who your audience is for each of your platforms. So as you can see here, this is a page that I've included within the YouTube section. So as you can see here, it's my YouTube statistics, my social blade snapshot, and then my YouTube demographic. This is where I really dive deep into who my audience really is. Because as I mentioned in this video right here, brands don't care about you as the influencer. They care more about who your audience is because at the end of the day, they're working with you in order to tap into your audience. And the more you're able to describe your audience, the more that you can help the brands understand whether or not you'd be a good fit to work with together. And so for example, for YouTube, I explained to the brands that my YouTube audience is a unisex North American based age 18 to 35 interested to learn more about entrepreneurship, social media, and online marketing. These people tend to be college educated millennials who want to leave their corporate jobs and pursue a new era of digital entrepreneurship. They've been working in their full-time jobs for at least one to two years and are very social media savvy. And I also explained to them that 
These people are the sole decision makers of their purchasing decisions and are willing to invest in products and services that will help them better their careers and or entrepreneurial efforts. So I'm really showcasing to the brand that, hey, the people who are in my audience have a very large likelihood to buy if the products help them with their careers, help them with advancing their entrepreneurial efforts. This includes courses, productivity tools, some tech software, books, tech gear, like cameras, microphones, laptops, all these things. And you might be wondering, Vanessa, how do you even know that? Well, I know that because I do a lot of market research with you guys. I'm very in tune with the comments that come through, with the feedback that I get from you guys. And so I have a really good idea of what you guys like and don't like. Not only this, I also really showcase to the brand other channels that are related to mine that you guys like to look at as well. So other channels that my audience subscribes to is Dan Locke, Sunny Leonard Doozy, and Jade Dharma Wangza. And the reason why I've included this is because I want the brand to really paint the picture of where to slot me, okay? So if I'm able to share with them other related channels, it's gonna be a lot easier for them to understand what category that I fit in. And again, going back to my other tip before, I'm also backing up my claims with the screenshot. So you can see that I'm not lying. On YouTube, the gender split is pretty much 50%. So 50% males and 50% female. And if you zoom in on the age range, you can see that between 18 to 24 and 25 to 34 is pretty much an even split. So by doing this, this really helps the brand understand who my audience is and it helps them paint a really clear picture. And as you can see, I've also included the top countries that my audience is in as well. Because if a brand only sells products in the US, they're gonna wanna work with an influencer whose audience is majority in the US or North American. So these are really important stats that they're gonna wanna know about. And again, I talk about it in this video right here. Now, moving on to my Instagram demographic, something that I wanna let you know is that for each of your social media platforms, you might see that you attract a different type of audience. So in my media kit, right when we hit the Instagram section and you go down here after I show all the stats, I dive into the demographics. And what you'll notice is the way that I describe my audience on Instagram is very different than my audience on YouTube. And this is true. From looking at the stats, I've noticed that I attract a more female audience on Instagram at a very particular age range. So a more mature age range, which is 25 to 34. And so this is important for me to highlight. Not only this, what I've noticed is that my audience on YouTube wants more of the social media strategies, whereas on my Instagram, most of the people who follow me are there because they wanna learn more about business, online coaching, and everything like that. And so this is what I explained to the brand. I explained to the brand that you know, most of my audience on Instagram are females. They're interested in becoming online coaches. They're new business owners. Maybe they're freelancers or even nine to five side hustlers. The reason why they follow me on Instagram is because they like to be in touch with our business, receive, you know, more of the motivational and inspirational content, and also to get to know me more on a personal level. And I'm really honest with the brands and letting them know that majority of this audience has found me on YouTube first. And so the reason why I have decided to split my demographics per channel is because some brands, they might want to work with you just for YouTube, or they might want to work with you just for Instagram, or maybe they have an awesome product that's going to be perfect for your Instagram. And then they've got another product that's going to be perfect for your YouTube. So the more that you can describe your audience to them for each of your social media platforms, the easier it is for the brand to actually visualize how they can work with you. And as you can see, I again include the other accounts that they enjoy following. And these accounts are a bit different than my YouTube channel. For example, on my YouTube, I mentioned that people like to follow Dan Locke, Sunny Learner Doozy, and Jay Dharma Wangza. Whereas on my Instagram, some of you guys enjoy following Gary V, Freelancing Females, and Boss Babe. So that's a very clear distinction that I want to share with the brands. So remember, in your media kit, make sure that you are super detailed on your audience demographic for each of your social media platforms. Now, moving on to the next tip that I have for you when you're creating your media kit, and that is include your other platforms that you have so you can increase your leverage. So even for me, the main two platforms that most brands want to work with me on is my YouTube channel and my Instagram account. But they might not realize that I have a Facebook group that I have an email list, that I have all these other platforms 
at my disposal. And to increase my leverage with these brands, I like to show them that I have strong numbers in other platforms as well. So for example, I will show the fact that I have a Facebook page and how many followers I have there and all the stats included, such as how many page views I get and why we have a Facebook page. And I'd explain to the brand that our Facebook page is predominantly used for hosting live streams, Instagram reposts, and YouTube video teasers. And the only reason why a lot of people like to follow me on my Facebook page is because now and then I will do a live stream. So that's what I explained to them. And as mentioned in my other tips, I again include all of the statistics. I include all of the data. And these are touch points, data points that you can easily find on all of these platforms that I'm mentioning. If you go on your Facebook page for your business account, you're able to access these stats for you to leverage. And as you can see here, I talk about my Facebook group. So I'm even leveraging the fact that I have a Facebook group. I go through the demographics of my Facebook group. And then I also talk about my website analytics. So in case this brand wants to work with me on a blog post or something like that directly on my website, I show my analytics. And these are statistics that you can easily find on Google Analytics. You can easily search up a tutorial on YouTube and figure out how to install Google Analytics on the back end of your website so that you can access all of these stats that you can leverage in your media kit. Another fun fact is that if you actually use Google Analytics, it also tells you a lot of the segments of the people who visit your web page. So I just quickly screenshotted that and showed it in the media kit as well, because remember, data, 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 really focus on being as data driven as possible. And I promise you, you will set yourself apart from all these other influencers who are just throwing numbers and guessing about who their audience really is. Versus if you use my approach, you're showing to the brand that you mean business, you are not lying and you are showing them the data, the proof of how your audience is and you're not just making it up. And by doing this, this is actually going to give you way more leverage and brands will definitely take you more seriously when you present them the hard, cold facts. Another thing that I include is my email list. So if you do have an email list, include that. I love to include these stats on how many subscribers I have, how many subs a day, what are my open rates, all these different things, because who knows, maybe a brand might want to work with me to do a news blast to my list. These are ways that I can actually upsell these brands into higher packages with me or bundling up services because I'm showing them how strong my platforms really are. And I'm creating that mass leverage because there's one thing of being really popular on YouTube, but there's another of being able to have all these other platforms that other people are following you on. Last but not least to tie everything together. The next tip that I have for you is obviously to include your prices. Now, I've blurred out my prices, but something that I teach in this video right here is you can use the app Social Blue Book to understand what to charge based off of your audience size. And I use Social Blue Book as a benchmark of what to charge for these brands. So definitely, again, I'm telling you, check out this video after you watch this one so that you can truly understand how you can tie everything together. So the one tip that I have for you when it comes to pricing is to make sure that you include different pricing for all of your platforms but consider bundling up your services as well. So as you can see here, I've created a little Instagram campaign bundle because what I noticed is that a lot of brands, they want to do more than one post or they want to do more than one Instagram story. So what I'll do is I'll actually bundle up and create little packages for these brands that would actually be cheaper for them to do it if they were wanting more posts or more stories from me. So if you actually added up the four posts and the eight stories, the bundle would actually be cheaper for them versus doing it all individually. So these are some little incentives that I include for the brands if they were interested in doing more work with me. So another pro tip that I want to share with you, that's something that I do is I make sure that I'm super clear that I am not personally responsible for boosting any posts. Cause what you'll notice is some brands, they might tell you to boost the post and that might come from the influencer's pocket. And so I make it really clear that if you want to boost any posts, if you want to put any paid advertising behind any of these efforts that I've done for you, that needs to come out of the brand pocket. So that's just one really pro tip that I want to share with you that you can definitely include in your media kit as well to make it super clear. And if you don't put it on your media kit, at least make sure that that's in your contract that you sign with the brand. 
So as you can see, guys, this is my media kit at a bird's eye view. It's very easy to put together. You just need to take that action and to actually show the brands that you're serious, show the brands that you are data driven, you have the receipts to show for, and that you know exactly what you're talking about. This media kit has served me really well, and I believe that I do it very differently from what other influencers may do. But the reason why I do it this way is because I used to be on the other side. I used to be a brand manager. I used to do PR. And so I was the person that was looking at influencers media kits. And I have to be honest with you, a lot of influencers don't necessarily do it right and they aren't data driven enough. And so I created this media kit based off of what I would have liked to see when I was working on the other side as the person that was choosing which influencers to work with. So again, if you want to learn more about my strategies on how to get more brand deals, make sure you watch this video as well, because what I showed you today is great, but it's not going to work if you don't watch this video and learn how you can position, pitch and communicate to the brands so that they're even interested to open up your media kit. Anyways, I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. Before you leave, something I also want to let you know about is we recently launched a podcast called Turn Your Followers Into Clients. So if you're interested in diving deep into more of the business strategy of things, definitely check out this podcast. I promise you won't regret it. Now, as you wait for next week's video, I post a lot of videos on entrepreneurship, social media, and online coaching. So definitely make sure you check out these two videos that I have here as well. As always, guys, I appreciate you. I hope you guys have a great day, a great week, and a great life, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys.